Microsoft's Ultimate Laptop just got better with the Surface Book Performance Base. Today I'm going to review it and tell you what I think. Stay tuned. Microsoft's new high-end Surface Book is aimed at two types of people, those who need more video power and those with deep pockets. While the Surface Book with Performance Base still runs the same dual-core Intel Core i7 Skylake processor, it gets a significant bump in graphics and, thankfully, battery too. Previously, Surface Book had two different SKU levels, one that used the Intel HD 520 graphics and one with an optional and more expensive NVIDIA GPU. Now, Microsoft has added a third option with the Performance Base. This time, instead of an oddly spec GPU, it has an NVIDIA GTX 965M with 2GB of dedicated GDDR5 video memory. The 965M is a solid performer, but it is also based on the older Maxwell microarchitecture announced two years ago. It also pales in performance compared to the new NVIDIA Pascal microarchitecture found in the GTX 10X series of gaming laptops. That's important to keep in mind. Remember, the Surface Book with Performance Base can do high-end gaming, but it won't outperform newer gaming laptops on the market. Nonetheless, it is a significant increase in the previous Surface Book's dedicated GPU. Playing Gears of War 4, this machine averaged 47 frames per second, but often went higher. That's at the native 3000 by 2000 resolution. Dropping down to 1621 by 1080 or Full HD, and that number went even higher. That's solid gameplay at medium settings with vertical sync disabled. Keep in mind, the hissing fans of the Surface Book will kick in as well. You'll probably want to use headphones when hard gaming to avoid this distraction. I don't want to hedge here. The Surface Book with performance base is perfectly playable for some high-end games. Microsoft did have one issue tossing in the GTX 965M, heat. To get thermals under control, the company had to increase the size of the Surface Book's base to add a second fan for cooling. The result is a somewhat bulging hump near the display, and now the front of the base does not taper off. However, the Surface team was smart. Most of this increased size is pushed to the empty gap created by the unique Surface Book hinge. That means this variant does not feel too different. While the base comes up around the keyboard somewhat, the travel of the keys does not change and typing feels the same between models. For thermals, the laptop peaked at 113 degrees Fahrenheit or 45 degrees Celsius with 20 minutes of intense gaming in Gears of War 4. That heat was also isolated towards the upper center of the keyboard near the function keys. You could also feel the heat on the bottom, although it never became uncomfortable to use. In a way, that physical change to the Surface Book is a blessing in disguise. Microsoft used the additional space to increase the primary battery by an additional 30%. The battery jumps from about 52 watt hours to 63.4, which when combined with the 18 watt hour battery in the top half, gives an impressive 81.4 watt hours of total power. To put that number in perspective, most Ultrabooks are in the 50 watt hour range, and no laptop goes over 100 watt hours due to airline restrictions. Microsoft claims this larger battery will give the Surface Book 16 hours of power. As usual, those claims are under ideal conditions. However, I can say that this increase makes a difference. In my tests over the last week, I consistently pushed 10 hours of real-world productivity. When you consider that this machine is running 16 gigs of RAM, a 1 terabyte SSD, and an upgraded GPU, that's mighty impressive. That increased battery life also means you can probably leave the AC charger at home, and that's a good thing. The new Surface Book ships with a larger 102 watt power supply. It's bigger and heavier than the original 65 watt one, so while you can charge quicker, it'll cost you in weight. The Surface Book with performance base weight comes in at 3.63 pounds, which is a jump from the previous 3.48 pounds. You can feel it too. While a 3.6 pound laptop is not heavy per se, the performance base variant seems dense for its size, which is fine. When combined with the magnesium chassis, the Surface Book feels substantial and premium. Nonetheless, it is still lighter than most 15 inch laptops, including the new 15 inch MacBook Pro, which weighs in at four pounds. All of this comes at a price though. The Surface Book with performance base starts at $2,399. That's for the 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigs of RAM. At the top of the mountain is our review unit, which has 16 gigs of RAM and a massive one terabyte of storage for a wallet depleting $3,299. And no, Microsoft has no plans to sell just the base with the new GPU in case you want to upgrade your current Surface Book. 
Microsoft has done an incredible job with the Surface Book with Performance Base. It may be expensive, but an extra horsepower is totally worth it. The downside is what comes next. Microsoft is expected to release a true Surface Book 2 sometime next year. There's little reason to doubt that they won't include Kaby Lake, which brings improved battery life and a 10% bump in performance. We'll also likely see the inclusion of USB Type-C and Thunderbolt. While the NVIDIA 10X Pascal series is excellent, I'm not convinced Microsoft is ready to put that into such a slim machine. It's important to remember that people who buy the Surface Book performance base are getting it for its current level of performance and outstanding battery life. It's not, however, the same crowd as elite gamers who always need to push the envelope. Personally speaking, I find the Surface Book to be the perfect laptop. The keyboard, trackpad, and unique 3x2 aspect ratio make it a joy to use. With improved graphics and even better battery life, a rare trade up, and you'll have to pry this device from my hands before I hand it over. Assuming you have the money, you can't beat the Surface Book, nor its improved performance based variant. If you're looking for the best in this class, this is it. So that's my review of the Surface Book with Performance Base. You can head to Windows Central for the full write up, including our benchmarks. Leave a comment below and tell us what you think. Thanks for watching. Take care, bye.